Hello YouTube, this is Andy from All Things Mini with another episode. Um, basically, today I am going to show you my take on using oil washers. Now, since um, the big wigs at Games Workshop decided to um, destroy these wonderful things, and make them shades. I have found that the old washes that GWs do, now their paints in general aren't that brilliant, in my honest opinion. Some people get on well with them, some people get on better with um, Vallejo. I'm a Vallejo person more. But um, I did love their washes. Their washes were fantastic. I've not tried uh, Vallejo, if I've got to be honest but their washes were absolutely fantastic. Now they've moved them over to these shades, which if you try to dilute with water, will precipitate out different colors. Um, so like a, like a brown or a black will precipitate a, a quite chalky white into recesses. I've had that ruin a couple of uh, models, which I really, really haven't been happy, happy with. And these are not really washes anymore, they're shades. They're just something to give an overall color on on what you are um, painting, a very thin form of, of, cut, of paint, that's all it is really now. Um, I suppose you can, you know, st uh, change it, you know, put some Lamian medium in and make it a wash and what have you, and maybe that's a guise just to try and get you to uh, to <laughs> buy more Lamian medium and stuff like that, but still. Um, I was searching on the internet and I liked the effect that you get with um, oil washes and I tried my first oil wash and it did come out really rather bad uh, I didn't put any varnish on the model but um, since then I have you know I got in contact with that chap I, I'm a subscriber um, to buy painted um, on YouTube and he is absolutely fantastic he's he is really damn good, and certainly with a, an airbrush as well. And he gave me a pointer or two, and and I was chuffed on. You know, I was very thankful for him to do that. But um, since then, I've you know started to come up with uh, a few different takes on oil washes. Now, now for the people that are. Um, uh, might not have used oil washes. If I can just reach over and grab these two, I'll put the ooh, I'll put the photos up of these because I took some photos of these. There we go. Try and get them in view. This is a cyber wolf that I've actually I'm um, converting into a normal wolf to pull a well to pull this when it gets finished. This black coach, which is sort of half red, half black. But still, um, I want this to look pretty cool and meaty and stuff like that. I don't have the skeleton horses. It was a gift from a friend or a swap, rather. And this has an extensive oil wash. Um, and it really does, an oil wash really makes things pop with the depth that it gives you. Hopefully you can see this. Um, this is just one of my uh, dye wolves. And as you can see, the, the oil wash really does bring out an awful lot but it doesn't mask over um, and affect the the flat sections. Um, one one of the things uh, Lester Bursley did, which I do like, is his soft body black wash. But I found that the soft body black wash, when it dries, it dries with a layer of film, and the film is quite um, reflective, which is uh, more often than not. Uh, an effect that I am not looking for. So um, I wanted something that would not leave a film on top of the uh, on top of the model, but will give me the value of depth that I need. And this certainly um, did. Uh, this uh, using oil washes certainly does help. Now, the one thing where I am different from other people. Some people say, "Well, I basically just get some thinners." which you'll need, low odour thinners, see, odour spelled with a U, proper way to spell odour, uh, low odour thinners, um, will, uh, it makes it much more pleasurable to use, but of course this is what, £4.15, 
this is a £4.15 bottle and you do get to use quite a lot of it so if you're going to do an awful lot of um, oil washing you really really don't want to waste um, you know too much money you might want to use other type of uh, thinners um, uh, like uh, terps um, or white spirit that kind of thing but this um, is low odour so it doesn't stink, give you a massive headache. Now I'm going to use this, but there was another thing I was discussing with um, somebody, I, this is the model that I'm going to show you, it's a real crappy looking um, zombie, just to show you what I want to do with him. Um, and basically, uh, I had to agree with what he said. Now back in my sort of watercolour painting days, you never used a full on black, because a black really does dull what you're trying to paint or it makes it quite flat so he suggested and I agree using two different colors this is ultramarine and this is burnt umber they're quite dark in their own right um, but you can make a very good black with one with these as I have done with those models but the other aspect is that you can make a very cold black with adding more blue or you can make a very dirty black adding more brown you can go in you know you, there's a whole range a whole spectrum or a continuum of different type of shades of black you can use if you do not use a pre-made flat black um, the other aspect is is that if I just want a nice blue wash but a darkened blue wash I can just put blue with a tiny bit of burnt umber and vice versa. Now what I'm going to do for him today is I'm going to make a sort of a muddier, bra uh, a muddier, a muddier black, depending on how I feel, um, basically because he is just nothing more than a um, cannon fodder piece. He will last approximately half a round at the most on the table and uh, you know he's hoard. He's a hoard model and therefore I'm not fussed about anything about this one really. Um, just the same as like these type of uh, skeletons here you know they're lovely models but again they're horde models and they're cannon fodder models so I'm not going to really go absolutely ape on trying to make sure I get every bit of detail and you might notice that he's not painted terribly well but that's because I don't really care because he's not a, a main a main figure right so anyway let's get on to the tutorial for oil washes oil washes now some people basically um, say one thing that you've got to do is you've got to uh, you know um, you know mix your oils and then you know you you mix it to an exact amount and uh, of, of thinner and then you test it on a piece and stuff like that really I do subscribe to what the chap from by, by painted states and I totally agree with it it is it is a very fluid sort of situation and therefore it is something which you um, need to get a feel for you know it's up to you I might like to put too much pigment in in comparison to other people other people might not put enough uh, um, you know might not put enough in uh, enough th thinner to begin with and so on so forth it's just something that you've got to practice with now this model has been um, pr uh, primed or been uh, painted or varnished rather with satin varnish but I have noticed this also works for matte but in a different way gloss I haven't used I'm not too brilliant um, I'm not too happy with using gloss on a main model because it make it too shiny I mean this is shiny enough so anyway let's see how I try to do this now as I said I want um, a slightly uh, brownie sort of black so what I'll do is I'll get some of this this stuff stains quite a lot, so be very careful. <laughs> um, there we go, place that in there, like that. And of course with oils, because they're oil, and the old saying is oil and water does not mix, is very true. You cannot use water to clean this kind of, um, this kind of medium at all. Now I want slightly more brown. I might need a little bit more brown if I want it browner. There we go. Right, so let's close that one up, but I will leave that one out because it's most likely going to be needed. Now, something I like to try and do is maybe give a little bit of a mix up before I put any thinners in. There we 
go. So I'll try to get my hand out of the way. And it doesn't matter wiping on the side because you're going to be brushing it off fairly soon. Now, as you make this, you need a crappy old brush like this. Um, one that you might have used for it before, um, but one you don't mind sort of slightly ruining. Do not use your really good stuff on this, as you will um, make them pretty, pretty soiled. Right, so basically I just squirt in. And the most important thing is to maybe here, shall we do it here? Just squirt in a little bit of of water of uh, thinners there um, to help clean your brush. Now we take this, this is our brush, and we just basically mix it up, not forgetting to bring that lot in. Try to make sure you can mix as much as possible because if you um, you you know as you can see you get clumps and you don't want to be wiping a whole load of half diluted um, oil clump on your uh, on your model. Now I do agree with testing to see if you've got the desired colour so I basically just draw it like that now as you can see I mean there's still some clump there but as you can see at the top part that's far too brown that really is insanely brown and shows me that I've put too much in. So what I do is just get a bit more blue. So as you can see, now this is, I mean it looks very brown, but that's because I want it quite brown. Um, I will try and actually maybe put on another model um, that I want actually sort of blackened out. <coughs> but, um, oh yeah, I've got my Krell I can show you. Yes, I did, I washed Krell, which, which came out rather nicely, even if I do say so myself. Now, there are some caveats to using oil washes. First of all, it's an oil, as I said, so it's not going to be the same as acrylic and whatever, so you don't expect the same sort of results, it's a different type of thing. The second thing is that um, be wary of clumps of colour. Thirdly, there we go, look at that, that's a nice blood, lovely big clump, wouldn't it? Um, thirdly, <coughs> if you use older wash so if you've left it for a day like I have in the past I've left stuff for a day and this hasn't evaporated or it hasn't dried out or whatever or I've been able to use the whole of it it um, can f it's odd because it separates some of the pigments and stuff not the separates the two colors they'll stay the same but it will suspend it will produce a, a, a layer of thinners with a lower layer of oil pigment because it's the the pigment is heavier than the than the oil uh, thinners and then basically it separates now you've got to be careful of that because if you then try and draw uh, a load of wash onto a model which is then using a separated oil wash it's not going to be that brilliant it's going to give you quite a bad um you can see where the picture uh, where all the particle particulates of oil wash will be separated and it just doesn't look that brilliant so, um, one final test, yeah, that's, see, as you can see, that's a browny black, it's quite a dark brown in effect, and to try and safeguard something of an old, an old brush, give it a quick wash, and then maybe a wipe on some cloth, and as uh, I think Lester Bursley said, which is very true, you know, you can either, you can put it on different ways, um, you can either put it on you know delicately but most of the time you'll be slapping it on you can then try and uh, with, withdraw it and let's see what we're getting here so let's just really stick it on here there you go now this piece isn't a brilliant piece, but what I'll show you exactly what the chap from By Painted does is that he'll take a he takes his flat brush. Well, I you know uses a flat brush, and I've found that it's actually very good to use a flat brush. Take off as much of the uh, 
to liquid as possible, the clean, uh, the thinner, because it, even though it's a thinner, it does act, of course, like a cleaner, because it is, in effect, a um, a paint uh, a paint thinner. And basically, just you know, you can begin to suck up some of these sort of little sections if you don't want it too too overpowering. Um, if you want a lot of definition, then you basically leave it there. If you want to experiment with how you position the piece, then that's fine. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of skin that should be showing through there, so there we go. And I will withdraw a little bit there. Try to remember to remove the excess from your clearing up brush. And that really is it. There's not a huge amount. Now how this one will dry um, will have an effect on where the oil suspension goes which um, if you don't want it like a lot of people will leave it if you don't want it sort of just pulling at the bottom you might want to hang him upside down so it pulls up the top that kind of thing you might want to put it on the side or whatever as I said this is just a can of fodder piece and I'm really not that interested in preserving too much detail but hopefully as you can see now he is really popped from what he did look at that uh, look like sorry and basically um, I'm happy with that and I'm gonna leave him like that so there you go that's the way I like to do my oils I do not like to use a flat black um, due to the fact that it really does dull the whole thing um, you, as I said, with certain cases you can maybe not prime it with a with a, a varnish or whatever, or you can maybe prime it with a matte varnish. It's completely up to you. So anyway, um, I hope this has been useful, and uh, I hope the, the Christmas period and the New Year's kicking off well. It's very white and cold where I am at the moment. Hence the reason why I'm not at university today, and I hope that this has been helpful. Right, I shall catch you later.